I'll just acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we gather and pay my respects. It's so lovely to be back at Living Edge. I've done a few things here and uh, I'm very lucky and grateful to the Kalal family with whom I've done some lovely things over the years and it's just uh, very nice to be here and to be with Gerwin who probably needs not much of an introduction if you've got an exhibition on right now. That's right. Congratulations to you. And I just learned you just got me. I did. Oh my gosh, congratulations. That's so fantastic. So, ostensibly, you're on your honeymoon right now, which is crazy. So, we should all just go and have champagne. It's lovely to see you go. Me too. We have spoken before in public about your work, and I mean, I've been watching your work develop over quite some time. And it's so lovely to see your trajectory and to see where you're headed. I should add as well that before I came this morning, I did have a fashion dilemma because I was thinking about <laughs> Gerwin's work and the colour and the, you know, the ebullient nature of it and then I wore all black, so go figure, I don't know why, I think I just panicked and decided to go black. I'm the same, I'm such a boring <laughs> I'm sure everyone expects you to turn up yeah. <laughs> in like, like amazing things and, uh, and we'll get to that actually a little bit about the costumes and the nature of them, but what a special uh, project you've done with them. Yeah. So, so amazing. So do you want to tell us a little bit about how that came about and that process of, I guess, immersing yourself in a hotel yeah. and what that was like? I mean, I can't take any credit for the conception of it. It was the Jan Murphy um, Hotel's <laughs> brainchild and I was kind of brought in at the end um, and it revealed to me that this great project was happening. Um, so, I mean, it was kind of a while in the works and COVID kept pushing it uh, down the track a little bit. Um, so I kind of... I came up here originally to do a bit of a, a site visit and to um, kind of familiarise myself. Uh, it was a very generous tour of all the kind of back parts of the hotel and I, I mean I was really interested in um, kind of drawing out spaces that were kind of less recognisable was really important to me because it's, it is obviously a very photogenic um, uh, building and very familiar with certain kind of advantages of it so I wanted to use this opportunity to kind of respond to certain parts of the hotel that were a little more unusual or less familiar. So after that I kind of returned to Sydney and spent some period making costumes and uh, experimenting until eventually it was time to shoot and it was a um, <laughs> process of kind of cramming all the costumes into my car and, and driving up the Pacific Highway, <laughs> um, which kind of raised some eyes at the Kempsey <laughs> service station. <laughs> um, this like tool kind of spilling out of the car. Yeah. So I kind of arrived up here in late April and uh, poured out of the car, covered in twisties crumbs and red eyed, and I had about five days in the hotel where everything was um, terrible. God, um, that must have been awful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it looks very kind of lush and relaxing, but yeah. was, I was I'm a bit militant about the way that I work, so it was kind of very much back to back uh, shots. And, and the hotel was so generous in kind of opening up. You know, it's very unusual to have six rooms yeah, wow. to, to yourself, and I'm kind of you know, shifting around the hotel, leaving sequin everywhere. And, yeah, it was, it was pretty incredible. And, and then once that was all kind of done, I went back and I've just been sitting on that since April ready to go. So it's nice that I find it here and, and the way out about And I think that's one of the interesting things about what you do is that, uh, you know, we see this beautiful finished project, pro uh, product, which is really quite painting. I mean, and, and lots of people look at your work and say, is that a painting? Because it has that incredibly crisp aesthetic. But really, they're very performative, aren't they? Like, so we see this finished product of this is the final yeah. But for you, is the project more performative? Because you're actually, I would imagine there are stills either side where you then you settle on this one. Yeah. But you're performing in the space. Yeah. You? yeah, and I mean there's hundreds of photographs. So I, I take hundreds of photographs to, to arrive at, at one. And it's not really like I'm constructing this costume in the studio, but it's, um, you know, it's a very kind of removed sculptural object. And it's, I don't actually kind of um, try it on really until I'm, you know, in front of the camera. Yeah, right. So, it's not until that moment when you know I've set up the lighting and I've set up the shot and then I kind of let the camera just fire off, I like hop into costume and shuffle into shot. And so, you know, that's the first moment I'm kind of that, materialized. That's hilarious. Sort of like, I wish I'd made this yeah. before. Like, I know, there's nothing about the process that is comfortable <laughs> or sexy. Or, and that's I think what you're talking about. This kind of veneer of polish and shine is actually it's awkward and cumbersome yeah. and very unnatural. And, I mean, there were times that I was shooting. I'm, I'm quite vulnerable because I can't see anything yeah. and I was shooting on the terrace on the side of the hotel and you know it takes me a while to get into the costume and imagine what you know imagine this characterization and start to feel like okay this is going well 
and I was kind of just in that moment, and then it was like a metre to my side here, I could hear all of a sudden these two people talking, and they were examining the lights, and it right me, and I got so stupid, because it was like, if I had been caught singing in front of the mirror, I kind of undid the fantasy. Yeah. 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 But uh, that is kind of interesting, that idea of um, concealment, yeah. and I find that really fascinating in your work. So tell, tell us a little bit about, I guess, how you arrive at a costume, because I think when I first met you, you were, I was at your honours as a diocese. Yeah, yeah, he did really well. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember you had made this costume that I think was Bob Wonky. Yeah, it was oh, a steel wool. Steel wool, that's right. right. And we had this lengthy conversation about that. And he was saying just how, how it actually hurt you so yeah. much yeah. to wear this costume. And I think you had all these other um, things too. But I remember thinking, the thing that struck me about that work was that it did seem, it, it sort of, for me, hark back to a lot of the 1970s which is about a kind of endurance yeah. and a pain as well. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's that as well. Yeah. So how are you arriving at those costumes? Like, do you think, okay, well, for this room, well, I want like hot paint. What yeah. do you think? I mean, um, you know, the costume is still wool. You know, when I started, I couldn't really construct costumes to the degree that I wanted to. And so I worked with a lot of ready-made materials because they also then invited this unexpected sculptural element to it. But as I learned to kind of sew better, I can have more control of those, and I can work with more traditional materials and think about how I can kind of, you know, re-articulate them into their odd forms. Um, so whilst they're uncomfortable, uh, they're not as bad as they used to be. There's no micro cuts and stitch line of any So when I mean in this project, because I had such great access to the spaces, and I, I was able to take the time to kind of think about, um, you know, how I could showcase, you know, the architecture of the hotel and atmosphere and how I could respond to these characters and costumes. Uh, I was able to kind of make costumes that, yes, things like colour are important, like that kind of vibrant brightness that draws you in is kind of routinely in the work. I was trying to kind of pull elements out of the, you know, the structure of the building itself that I could kind of mimic in the costumes, so the kind of curves uh, were really important in there. Um, and also because some, some of the spaces like the gymnasium, for example, thinking about how the character can be more of the space, so it kind of inhabits it and it feels like more of a habitat. So, um, yeah, I think having that time and that access to work and reflect on the space um, meant there's a little bit more of a synergy between the costume and the environment. And so, also, uh, you recently did that project with uh, Sydney Living Museums, which I don't know if you've seen it, but you can go online and see it, which is an incredible project, I thought. Yeah. So it was across uh, several, uh, well, how many, 12? Mm -hmm. 12 it's, uh, institutions that come under the umbrella of Sydney Living Museum, so from Borkley's House through to, I can't remember some of the other ones. Like the State Archives. The State Archives. 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 And so you, a similar process where you inserted yourself into space, and, but it, it was very research based, wasn't it? Yeah. You were thinking about those places. That's pretty important to what you do, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, especially with a project like that, because I'm, you know, dealing with these historical homes and trying to think about how I can kind of represent them to a contemporary audience that maybe weren't feeling all that engaged by the stories of, or what these houses represent. You know, sometimes contested and quite problematic histories. And so, in mean, that, it was really important to come from a research base. I wanted to kind of dive into them and see, you know, who were the kind of queer figures that were in these, um, that lived in and worked to move through these spaces. And when they weren't readily available, I was then interested in how I could kind of, you know, cherry pick parts of those stories and then develop a kind of counter queer history. So a project like that, because it was you know, such a politically, socially charged you know, space as I was working with, it was really important to be kind of a research process. And one of the figures, did you do something, something with the jail, the Sydney jail? And the, there was the Hyde Park Barracks. The Hyde Park yeah. Barracks, rather, yeah, which yeah. has a very contested history. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, they all kind of did. The one that kind of stuck out maybe is because it was more of a, it's a kind of more recent and also private home was the Rose Sidler House. Yeah. Uh, and obviously having um, kind of living safely. It was a little bit more kind of delicate to dance around that. Um, but, and so in that one, it was probably more responding to the architecture itself, which probably aligns with this project, and it was more kind of admiring, you know, the structure and thinking about how this character could be in and of the home. And it's interesting how quickly, of course, the Kalile has become uh, an architectural feature of Brisbane. And we've come to see the hotel, which is really significant. So I think people will look back on this body of work and see it as historically. So if we talk about that idea of concealment, you don't show your face. Why? 
Well, I mean, it's kind of a depersonalizing process. When I originally started making them, I also, you know, I was, probably wasn't as heavily tattooed, and so I would also strategically either hide and then remove tattoos, and then, you know, the horse really bolted. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized that kind of I could incorporate that into it, and the tattoos kind of serve as a costume as well, right? It's this kind of second layer that draws attention to the surface of the skin. They invite kind of certain kinds of reading, but, you know, in the same way they kind of push you back. So, I mean, that's what I'm interested in, in this costume making process and the concealment of the face. It's about kind of, you know, re-articulating the relationship between, you know, the subject of the portrait, the camera, and the viewer. You know, in its most conventional sense, the idea is that photography is a medium of exposure, and we have this idea that the camera has a special capacity to reveal something in the subject. So, you know, when you look at it, you can kind of take that time to pour over the details and you know the idea is that we're talking to some kind of genius that's going to you know provide you with some you know a hidden portion of character about their subject and so I'm thinking about ways you know I can kind of clear that relationship and complicate it and so you know one of the great things is that I'm in control of like the subject you know and, and I'm a photographer as well but I'm thinking then beyond that about how I can find ways to draw the viewer in to kind of look at these really elaborate, spectacular surfaces, but at the same time, mm. hold them at a distance. And I think another thing when you talked about that idea of, you know, the big kind of like paintings mm. is that I like to create this kind of graphic flatness to the images. So it takes people a moment to kind of look over it and, and try and figure out if it's real or fake. Or it has this yeah. slickness to it that's kind of too perfect. And I, I love holding that, that tension. I know, because it, it, people just don't realise how much work goes in, into the making. It's interesting that you say the subject, you're describing you, you as a photographer and the subject, yeah. that's you, but they're definitely not self-portraits, are they? No, and I, I mean, I, there is this kind of really labor process of you know, this Frankensteining of this costume, and then I'm hopping into it and shooting it, and then it's very much a kind of detaching as well when I move on from that as well. I'm ready to start making the next thing. But I, I don't look at them as images of myself. It's kind of a practical work. And you don't keep the costumes, do you? No, I mean, I have highlight some of them, and I think, um, you know, with the museum show, for example, the costumes were exhibited alongside the images, and so, um, you know, that, I kind of retain them for that. But I, I have to pull them apart and repurpose the materials, like I'll rip all the foam out of them and turn them into something else. And, you know, it's also kind of this expensive process, you know, hoarding, really. <laughs> Chintzy fabric, you know. So it may be I kind know, of, is amazing. It's yeah. one of my favourites. It may be kind of, you know, cheap and gaudy, but it's not yeah. mass. So I try to find ways that I can kind of reintegrate that stuff into the next costume. And you, you're working solo, as in you're taking the photographs as well. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. I actually, when I, I interviewed Sydney Sherman, and she is surprisingly, Sydney Sherman works on her own. Yeah. Right. Which is so remarkable. Yeah. So it's just all that makeup and the costumes and everything. Completely solo takes the photograph really no one there doing yeah. it. And I said that that is fascinating. So she's only recently moved to digital yeah. from analog, um, but is that process is completely on her own. So is that quite important to you? Could you, yeah. you think you could do it if someone probably couldn't do it, right? So no, I well, like I'm a bit of a control freak about yeah. the whole process, yeah. and a part of it is the shooting process is so unglamorous <laughs> and vulnerable, and so I like to be alone doing that and to kind of concentrate on what I'm doing. But I, I like to be in charge of every aspect of it. And I mean, even now I'm kind of experimenting with moving image. I don't really know, I don't really know. I was kind of afraid of it. I realised yeah, I'm silly. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that, but yeah. But it's, you know, it's, I'm, I'm enjoying the process of kind of learning. I need to be alone in that to kind of figure it out. You know, it's, um, it's like, why don't you send it to an editor? I'm like, no, because that's how I don't learn how to edit. Yeah, yeah, that's, Sorry, that was wow, he is a control freak, this yeah. is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I admire that, I think that is, you know, an artistic sensibility, or you want to be across all of those deep yeah. techniques. Well, that's how I learned to sew, it's just kind of like, you know, yeah. burying myself in the problem solving. Yeah. It's really satisfying, you know, so you know, skill. Did you take your genome to the collage? I actually did. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. I hope you got some good photographs of that. Yeah, there was some good photographs. Buzzing away. There were probably guests going, what is that? <laughs> the generosity that actually gave me two adjoining rooms, so I had a sewing room separate. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. That's yeah. Which I unfortunately didn't have to use it too much, but there was one of the costumes I shot it was accidentally packed in the car, it got kind of scooped up with everything else. So when it was there, I saw the opportunity to make another image, which I hadn't planned for, so it was nice to be able to you know, refabricate the headpiece in the room.
And so in terms then as well, I was wondering about when I was looking at your work, because I've thought this for a while, would you like to work perhaps in theatre? Like I was thinking about the Shihara Shiota show, um, and I don't know if you've all seen that exhibition at Goma, but there's some beautiful images of a theatre set she made in Berlin. It's so beautiful. And I was thinking, you could do that. Yeah. Or maybe not the steel one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's kind of a process of slowly gaining confidence. I think not having the you know technical foundation, I was self-conscious about my construction skills at a certain point. But you know, I obviously feel a lot more confident now. And collaborating with Bradley Gomez is like mm. such a incredible. Yeah, so how, what did you make for them? Uh, I, I, I did this Sydney in Melbourne. Windows, so the Sydney one was a kind of recreation of the photograph, um, and I fabricated two costumes. So they, they constructed a, a mannequin of me, like a replica, uh, like that Kim Cattrall film mannequin. And they then an um, artist kind of redrew all the tattoos on this mannequin, and so there was an element where they filmed me in a matching costume to the mannequin. Uh, but it was one of those projects that COVID again kind of interrupted, and then I simply was the third. Rendition of what's happening in Brisbane oh, in November, oh, and it's going to be, um, it's going to kind of have more of that performative yeah. element. So I'm working on the windows on uh, Edward and Elizabeth Street, oh, yeah. cool. and again it's a recreation of two um, images mm -hmm. from uh, the kind of Utopia series. And so I will construct costumes, mannequins, mm -hmm. and there will should be some kind of live element to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything. <laughs> we'll have to kill us all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How fantastic. But I do love that idea of um, the theatricality of what yeah. you do. It's all implied in the work. Uh, it's all there, but there's this stillness to it, which is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then, so this idea too of pleasure, so talk about that, because of course the idea of a hotel is this kind of pleasurable yeah. experience. How much are you thinking about that on your, what is pleasure? For some people it's something completely yeah. different. I guess when I was kind of thinking about a title for it, I, like I like this kind of short, almost deadpan, you know, pithy yeah. things. And I, I, I like the idea of pleasure because I was thinking about the atmosphere that the hotel creates. And you really do get kind of caught in its orbit and you're walking around feeling, you know, kind of sexy and powerful and cool. And, you know, um, and I, I was thinking about that kind of the pleasure of that, of being, you know, Inside and moving around uh, the hotel and kind of within you know the limits of its, its time, but you know there's also a lot of the materials I'm using have this um, you know there's lots of kind of sequin and spandex and, and uh, you know these pleathers and it tips into this yeah and it tips into this kind of you know it's not as strong as the word fetishy but yeah. there's 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 this kind of tactility there's a sensation to the fabrics and to the wearing of the costumes which you know, it invites a certain kind of pleasure of its mm -hmm. own. So I liked the way that that word... So um, it's like a real tension between these luxe materials yeah, and these and kind of... and my cheap gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so fabulous, though, en masse. Like, you know, it, like, children love tulle, and, yeah. and I love tulle, but children really love it, and there is something really pleasurable about those materials. Yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And it's nice being able to kind of target those materials when I'm, you know, shopping unapologetically <laughs> by the loudest. I'm going to go yeah. that. Yeah. Feathers. Yeah. <laughs> it's really wonderful. So what is next for you after events? What do you, I mean, I've, so as we've learned, this has taken a long time, this yeah. project, this work. So is it, like Sydney the museums is how long as well? Um, so that was a kind of 12 months. It was oh, relatively months. quick, but I, we were in lockdown yeah. for bulk of it. Yeah. So I was, as an essential worker, I was yeah. Kind of going around Sydney shooting. I love that you're an essential worker in your costumes. Yeah. That's like the best thing. Yeah, there was a was right in the middle of it, and I was shooting at Elizabeth Bay House, and I saw the police come up to the front oh door, gosh. and I was, I was just there with the hero, and I kind of, I didn't have my head on, but I had this huge bowl of skeleton thing, and I'm going to, out, out, it's cops. I was thinking, oh, yes. how am I going to justify this? Like, everyone else is up to their house, and here I am. Kind of wishy people. Channel 9 News shuffling. <laughs> it would have been the best. Um, so, again, there's this beautiful history of costuming in, in Australian popular culture. I mean, obviously, you can't not think of Lee Bowery. Yeah. So, I'm interested in how you came to to costuming. You know, yeah. what was the... So, at university, you were doing photography, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. how did you then I mean, just decide to make things? Just a kind of side interest, and I started, you know, making... 
yeah, aren't we, by functional <laughs> clothes, because I wanted to learn how to sew. Yeah. And it, it began by, you know, even the kind of early photographic work I was making, you know, it was very constructed. I was kind of sewing dioramas and constructing these sculptures that I would then photograph. I've never really been a photographer in a proper sense. Yeah. And it's always about putting something in front of the camera. So, it, you know, logically they came together. But this sewing stuff was really just something I wanted to explore. And I think, you know, it is a nice medium because it is very hands on and it's, um, you can kind of uh, create and, and make you know, giant failures. And I think something like New Barry is really great because it's about, you know, building this and constructing a spectacle for a certain environment, but it's a very kind of welcoming, opening environment. These aren't, you know, Yes, eventually his works did go on runways, but they started in nightclubs and it was uncomfortable and it was really about construction for the visual rather than the comfort. And so, my, like, that is a really kind of inspiring place to start working from um, and how I kind of, you know, began making that. It's fantastic because it's what I think is so interesting about how that otherness of Lee Bowery has just become. It's swapped around. It's no yeah. longer the other, which is yeah. amazing. And I don't know if anybody went to Bowery Topia and yeah. um, Brisbane Festival, which was right. massive, like yeah. incredibly big. Everybody got out there, you know, <laughs> and made things, which I thought was fantastic. But I remember when I was studying art history, Lee Bowery was still kind of very much the other, yeah. you know, and, and such an anomalous figure who <laughs> takes off to London and then becomes a megastar, yeah. which is he had to go away to become famous. I'm wondering if anyone would like to ask a question of Gerwin before we go over and look at some of the words, perhaps. This is a great opportunity to ask the artist. Anyone? Don't just trust Where are you buying his fabrics from? I, just um, anywhere. I, it's got a spotlight. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah, anywhere, anywhere where it's like <laughs> rhythmic gymnastics shop. Yeah, no, there's a place I go to. Um, there's this really nice woman called Kim who's like my fabric dealer. <laughs> she's in her store and I go out there and she's got all the really, really good gorgeous stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when I walk in there, they're material. checking and like, the queen, it's really lovely. And did you just teach yourself to sew? Yeah. And, and I mean, I haven't actually seen anything of yours, so I'm yeah. really new to oh, it, so it's very exciting. Yeah. But obviously you have to put a, a shape, like wire shapes and things. I just looked yeah, online that's right. and, yeah, tell us about the and stuff them. Yeah. Well, I, I, like I work on a mannequin, I guess maybe the easiest, maybe this orange. So, you know, I begin by building a kind of base, which is this orange bodysuit that zips up in the back. It's like foam. And then I'm making like these kind of, yeah, cutting out of foam, and then I'm building cases for them. And it becomes a small kind of, you know, textile sort that I repeat the pattern and I apply it, and then just hope for the best. And then, you know, that's a relatively comfortable costume. I would love to. I think when you were first starting, the ones that I remember the honours, I remember thinking, wow, he's really got like a thing for things that hurt. Because you, yeah. like, you had synthetic grass yeah. and you had, the, you had so many things, and it was very labour intensive. Wasn't yeah. it? Like, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Right. And there was a lot of just hoping for the best in that as well. It was all kind of, you know, made for to be shot and a lot of corners cut. And one cross cutting the other, not having. Maybe skills just yet to achieve what I wanted yes, to. Yes, yes. So not always a back. Did you have a back? It was rarely Sometimes. a back in those yeah, early that's days. <laughs> like, you know, you can't see around. You can't see around. Yeah. yeah. But I think even kind of having that museum show and knowing the costumes had to stand alongside them, yeah. and then it's like they had to, in a way, kind of compete with the images, right? And in the end, the audience response was like, "Oh, I don't care about the images. It's just yeah. a little bit something." <laughs> um, it really made me kind of, you know, push. It. And to be honest, it's my favourite part. It's so much more enjoyable sitting in the studio and mm. sewing and making mm. these things and shopping for fabrics. And that's the process, isn't yeah. it? Like that's what we were talking about before is that that we are literally seeing the finished product, but yeah. the artistic work is the making yeah. and the doing yeah. and the performing and that only you get to see. Yeah. Uh, except for the you were saying saying a few people wandering around the Kalal so yeah. you yeah. <laughs> doing people like what is this? <laughs> and another that house came in, came in when I was shooting something on the and it's not in the exhibition but it's this red leather <laughs> thing. So Implications like a phone sex thing. Oh, the phone. So There's lights and cameras on the bed, and they came in and they're like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. And they were just very courteous. Very but the mini bar needs to be How funny that's so great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Does someone else have a question?
I'm, yeah, I think very much done with you. I'm definitely, like, it's, a, it's definitely a process of like, you know, embodied performance. Like when I'm in the costume, I'm transformed, I'm acting, and I'm, because, you know, the costumes have you in their own dimensions, um, levels of comfort, and so there is a kind of process where you, you know, inhabit this thing, and you like, when I was talking about being sprung, you start to get into this um, space. But I feel like it's kind of a means to an end. Once the image is shot, I'm very like, oh, I was awful and out of it. But I, I think there are certain images that I have a fondness for because either the shoot's gone well or I enjoyed the costume making or basically this entire series, the whole process was such a ball from start to finish. So there's certain images that I have a real affection for. Um, but I also, you know, I'm always kind of eager to make something else. I'm ready to move on to the next thing and, you know, fabricate the next creature. So I'm, I'm a bit fickle as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the art historian in me wants to know if you're good about keeping an archive. And I know you don't Absolutely. store the costumes. Now, Chan, you have to work on this. Uh, it's, it's very important it's, that you do keep things though. It's really, uh, it's quite stressful the studio. Because it's like, then I move to a larger one and it's the walls are slowly creeping a bit up there. Yeah, right. Yeah. You might need an assistant to go in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to burn it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not burn it all. <laughs> I know, because I can't, I always think like, you know, as, as, as a curator and art story, yeah. I think, want all that little record because I know I saw this great Lee Barry show mm -hmm. and it was so great because there was you could see the working process yeah. and some of the things that have been found but not enough. I remember yeah. thinking oh we need so much more of, of this to yeah. see so that's why right I'm on. telling you. On notice. Yeah. <laughs> and another, and we, another question sorry um have you ever made a costume for somebody on you know to go down the red carpet or anything like that and would but you? But he'd love to. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised somebody hasn't asked. Well, yeah, yeah, I people do actually ask me, yeah, yeah a yeah. lot. But I, I think part of the one was a confidence thing about not having yeah. the construction skills to be employed. And now I feel like I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. It's still a control issue for me. Like, it's like I like making them for <laughs> myself. Go, but yeah. I'd love the idea of kind of making yeah. things for other people. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I you're thinking Met Gala, aren't you? Oh, That's no. what I'm thinking. <laughs> I think it's got that whole oh, kind of spectacle. Like and yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. But generally, people are something that like approached by musicians, like pop musicians, mm -hmm. which yeah. makes, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm. Any more questions? We might leave it there. Thank you so much, Gerwin, for being so generous sharing, because I've asked you lots of personal questions. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it's a big thing to talk about how you make work. You know, that's not always something that I was to do. Thank you. And I think now there's an opportunity to walk over to the class and see the work in the so. okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.